WVUAFM, Tuscaloosa. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the student section on 90.7 The Capstone with Clay Pruitt and my two favorite fellas. Elliot Scully and Kaysen Smith. We lost one of our boys. He is not on the show anymore. He swapped over to the MLB show this, we this fired semester. We fired him. Baseball. We fired him. Ewe. We can't have somebody with that haircut in here. We can't. We can't do it. <laughs> we can't have a Giants fan here. No. We had an amazing group of games this past weekend, fellas. What do you guys think about the first one up, the Seahawks versus 49ers game? I'm biased, so I'll let y'all go first. <laughs> I thought it might have been, I mean, objectively, might have been the least entertaining game. It looked at the half, looked like it was yeah. going to be pretty good, and then it kind of got away from him. I um, can definitely see that. Yeah. I, I thought, I don't know, CX put up a good fight based on what they had, but um, I don't know. I think Brock Purdy is definitely going to be a good player. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to lead him to a Super Bowl, though. I, I, I think that's a stacked team, but I thought there were just too many times where it was a mistake that was like, ah, he's a rookie, you can't do that. And, you know, that's fine if we were in week five, but the problem is we're heading into the divisional round of the playoffs. You kind of have to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, watching this game, I was kind of just waiting for the 49ers to 49er their way <laughs> to to a W. I mean, the Eagles, I mean, not the Eagles, the Seahawks looked pretty good so far in the in the first half, but I didn't really expect much out of them just because the Niners have had their number all year. Um, it's just a horrible match uh, all over the field for the Seahawks. And, I mean, Geno... Like he, he like he's he's had a career resurgence this year, but I think the Seattle system is just doing absolutely excellent. But it, it can only last for so long. And I actually want to kind of flip the table. And I, I think Brock Purdy's been getting a whole whole lot of praise, which he has been actually very very good filling in as uh, the Mister Relevant. Um, he's one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the league right now. Um, but I think it's just a matter of time until uh, he collapses in the playoffs. I agree. Yeah. I think this next game will really show what he's made of because, I mean, they play the Cowboys, and the Cowboys have a really good defense, really good linebackers. I mean, Trayvon Diggs, he's a – depending on who you ask, he's a stud. He's improved a lot this year in his coverage. Yes, he has. I, I think he's a already. really good – do what? Michael Parsons already is making plays too. We saw that last night. Exactly. Dude, Michael Parsons, he, he's my defensive player of the year candidate. Wow. I think he's an amazing player, and he, he deserves the recognition. I know um, which Bosa brother is it? Is it Nick Bosa that everybody's talking about? Yeah, Nick yeah. Bosa. Yeah, Nick. Yeah. Nick Bosa is really, really, really good. Don't get me wrong, but he's also. I don't think he's put up the numbers that Michael Parsons had at his position. That's that's my opinion with the whole, um, awards thing. Is I think it's based on you should the position should matter too, because Michael Parsons isn't supposed to get the numbers that he's putting up. So, I mean, Nick, you kind of expect him to get a bunch of tackles, a bunch of sacks. True. It's just how it is cause, because of the position he plays. But, I mean, in that game, he had he didn't really do as much in the first half. Um, second half, he had a, he had a bunch of rushes. Um, what, are they, what do they call the stat? Where they didn't get a sack, but... Pressure? Yeah, pressure. That's what it is. He had a, he had a lot of pressures. A lot of pressures. I was very surprised. If you yeah. get that amount of pressures, you should have at least a sack. He didn't have a single sack the whole game. Um, Charles, I don't know how to say his last name, but he had two sacks. And then I think we only gave up one more sack, and that was to Arik Armstead. That's who it was. Let's say, so. is it, isn't, aren't both y'all's tackles rookies? Yes. So that has a lot to do with it. I mean, the Niners just have an absolutely perfect defense, uh, by far the best in the league. Um, they just they help that offense out so much with the field like the position on the field that they give them, and you know y'all have two rookies which are amazing draft picks. I thought Cross wasn't actually that great of a pick at first, but he's really proven to be an amazing guy, the guy that uh, the franchise guy for the future. But I mean, it's their first playoff game. They're like 22, 23 years old, and you're going up against all pros all over that defense. So like, and you everyone expect expects this team to go like. Six and eight or six. And exactly. Yeah, like Everybody expected us to be like two or three in the NFL. Right. And look at us now, nine and eight. Yeah. So got the draft pick though. Incredible. Yeah. Thank you, Broncos. Yeah. I'll take it. I actually think we should get Will Anderson on that pick. Um, I don't think Bryce will drop that far. If he does, snag him, hundred percent. Y'all got three, Gino. right? But we have five. I got five. Yeah. I, oh, I, Bryce will not drop the five. Yeah. No. I, no I think there, if there's no lucky, way he drops y'all the could five. end up looking at Stroud. But I mean. 
I don't yep. know. Why would you take a quarterback, though? I feel like Gino's your guy. How old is he? He's like 32. That's no, that's 30 young. or 32. In today's NFL, that's pretty young. Yeah, but you got to kind of hope that uh, he improves. I, I think this is kind of like the peak that we'll get from Gino. That's just me personally. I think if you can get a guy like Stroud and have him sit behind for like a year or two, I mean that's that's yeah. like that's a guy that is easily a day one starter, and you kind of kind of warm him up for a year, so you can get a lot out of him. So I, I would I would love the pick if they got Stroud. I think you could also look at Miles Murphy, the the edge or the DN from Clemson. He's been amazing this year as well. Yes, I I, I really think we should go defense with our first pick because offense was fine. They can I mean they didn't do horrible against the 49ers, and the 49ers have the best defense in the playoffs. But um, speaking of fantastic games. I did not expect the Chargers and the Jaguars to be fantastic, yeah. but it was. That was the game of the week. Easily. It was incredible. 28-0 to zero at halftime. 27. It was 27-7, to seven, but it was a 27-0 to zero deficit with about like two and a half minutes left. Yeah. 27-0 to zero with like two minutes left till halftime. Yeah. And then the Chargers come back. Or the Chargers release the lead, give the Jaguars a free win. It was bad, man. It was bad. I was not expecting that at all. Trevor Lawrence had a 24.8 QBR rating in the first half. Four picks. Exactly. It was bad. It was really bad. And then he had 114 in the second half. Dude, he was incredible. He was dotting everybody up. I had the Jaguars win in this game. Um, They were hot. I had Evan Ingram going for 100 yards. He definitely did not. (laughs) Hey, he was only seven off, though. Yes, yes, he was. He's been a – he's had a – big resurgence with the Jaguars so far I mean uh, he went from being pretty much a dead asset for the Giants and now I mean he's I, I honestly have him in like my top eight tight ends in the league he's been amazing for them oh yeah I know for fantasy he's been a stud he's been fantastic yeah I mean I was at the Titans game whenever he diced us up for 160 <laughs> and three tutties so uh, we got ingrammed but um, I'm actually not really surprised uh, with this game. I mean, when I when it was 27 to seven and they had all momentum, I kind of I was like, you know what? This this is there's still a game. Okay, like, LeBron James, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the Chargers Chargers suck at holding a lead, and I, uh, Brandon, Brandon Staley I think is a bottom tier coach. 27 zero. I don't know. It could be in it. No, really. I'm, be, because like, like, no I'm, liar. I, I'm dead serious. Because look, look. I'm gonna need like, to see some receipts on this one. Look, no yeah. no lead is safe. Brandon Staley is not a good coach. Has been uh, horrible at closing out uh, in the past couple years being head coach of the Chargers. And their play calling you could you could really see it. And also like all their points in the first half came off turnovers and short fields. When they had full fields they did not do much with it besides I think it was their opening drive. So they come out and they're just trying and they're just check down. Check down. Check down. Check down. And they, they did not go for it. Like they were not having good play calls out there and they got way too conservative and that's what bit them in the butt. It's like you play to win. You don't play not to lose. And I think a lot of people are blaming Herbert. Um, I don't think Herbert should get much blame. A little bit of blame. Just just a tiny, tiny bit. But I think the play calling um, was just absolutely horrendous for them. And I am not surprised that um, they gave up that. And also the Jaguars were one of the hottest teams in the league coming into the playoffs. And the offense, you know, could spark in a second. So, I mean, it was really cool to watch, but feel bad for Herbert. But I love to see the Jaguars succeeding. So I really wanted them over the Titans in the playoffs. Yeah, my general rule is whenever most of the points in the first half by a team up big is off, like, turnovers or special special teams errors, stuff like that, then I kind of say, all right, I, I'm open to that possibility for yep. a comeback. Like with the, the Dallas and uh, Tampa Bay game last night, we'll talk about it later, but it wasn't really – because of the Bucks' wrongdoing that the Dallas offense was hot, they were just hot. So it was difficult for me to see a situation where they were going to stop being hot and the Buccaneers were going to start being So, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you guys are right. Uh, I don't actually believe that you're like, oh, they're yeah. going to win. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I said, there's a chance. There's a chance. Maybe like 27-20. You're like, oh, there's a chance. <laughs> it, it was, but I don't know uh, about 27 It was 27-7. I was like, it's going to halftime. I was like, you know what? Are you the guy at the Alabama games that sees 60 and 7? And he goes, well, there's a chance. There's a chance <laughs> there's that Vandy all, can hey, win. There's always a chance you never know. It's the NFL. <laughs> you and you he, do and have that is, right. This is when you get the best out of teams is when their life is on the line. Yeah, you got so. that right. Um, do you see Trevor Lawrence – or not Trevor Lawrence. Um, J. 
Justin Herbert, um, there was one play that I was really impressed by him. There was, um, I don't remember who was catching the ball. However, his ball placement that game was actually really good on the plays that he completed. The mm-hmm. ones that he didn't complete, they were pretty bad. Oh yeah, he, I mean, he, he missed some really, really, really bad balls. Yeah, I mean, this. Uh, I was watching a bunch of film on this, and the uh, the receivers were horrible at separation. You got yes. Keenan Allen's corpse. Mike Williams was hurt because Brandon Staley stupidly played him the week before in a meaningless game against the Broncos. So that's that's their best threat. Like you could say Keenan Allen is their best wide receiver, but Mike Williams is their best threat. And then, then they're just playing with a bunch of scrubs. And then Gerald Everett's a pretty decent tight end. And Eckler, he's a fantasy beast. But I don't think he's all that great. That's just a pure running back. But I mean, Herbert has some of the. I, I honestly think he has like some of the best ball placement in the entire league. Um, I think he's actually a top three arm talent the league has ever seen. Um, it just has to be unleashed. But um, I mean. Uh, Chargers OC just got fired. Head coach is probably about to get fired as well. So oh, yeah. I think I think we can kind of see what's going to go on. So it'll be fun to pay attention to them in the next couple coming weeks. You think the Jags beat KC? No way. I don't even think it's close. I'll save it till the the, the last section. <laughs> He's gonna have some off the wall stuff. Like oh, oh. I won't I won't be too crazy. It's I, gonna I be sixty seven to seven. <laughs> hey, I had fun in the regular season and it did not bite me in the butt. So that is very true. Um, I think you're the one that won that. Nope. One. No, no, I won. Elliot, I was second. Yeah. You won second, me third. Adam was last because Adam why I got fired. Yes, yeah. that is why he got fired. <laughs> it's like Survivor. We we should have done a punishment for that. That would have been hilarious. Have him sit at Waffle House for twenty four hours. <laughs> just, yeah, someone did that recently. Dude, there's no way I would do that. There's well, no way. You know, it's like you eat a waffle, you get an hour off. Yeah. So she was only there for like, I don't know, fifteen or something. Which is really? still a lot. That's but you know, you eat nine waffles and. Yeah. Well, what, what, one of my one of my good buddies, one of my roommates last year, um, in his redraft league at um, at home. Um, he lost, so he had to do the 24-hour Waffle House Challenge. He was there from, like, it was 6 a.m., and then I think he was gone by, like, 8 p.m. because he ate 10 waffles. Yeah, honestly, wow. I feel like an hour in, I've got at least five or six now. Yeah. Like, I, I'm just hungry, you know? And then, like, I'll wait an hour. I'll eat another, like, four. I'm yeah. like, you know. Then it's just, I feel like it's going to go quick. What yeah. if you fasted the day before that? Uh, so you were just super hungry. Honestly, I would probably – I would actually not because if I fasted, then my body would probably not be – used to the, the food intake so it would probably like hurt my stomach like, well you can like That's drink water keep your stomach full That's what yeah the pros do. true I, would know. I actually didn't know that yeah like the man versus food stuff he'll drink a lot of water before but he won't eat for like three days dang yeah it's crazy well uh moving on to the next game we have the <laughs> dolphins the bills I, I expected that one to be a blowout because Tua Everyone wasn't playing. Yeah. It was looking like it at uh, yeah. first. The Dolphins' defense, I think, is better than what people give them credit. The Dolphins' defense is the reason that they're in that game because yep. their quarterback threw two interceptions. And, and even more than that, the Dolphins, they had so many chances at the end. They had so many drives that ended up punting where they could have tied it up for taking the lead, and they just didn't. And it was like you're, you keep giving it back to Buffalo. Eventually, they're going to score and go ahead like – I don't know. That's why, like, I don't think the Dolphins deserve that win. It would have been cool. I was rooting for them. Mm-hmm. I was pulled for the upset. It was awesome. But, you know, they just they didn't have enough. Maybe with Tua they would have. But they didn't have enough offensive production to really have a shot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Scott, Skylar Thompson playing as well as he did was very surprising to me. Um, but I th- this could have so easily went the Dolphins' way. Um, yeah. I, th- I think, a lo- I mean, a lot of it really had to do with uh, time time management clock management was pretty horrible for the Dolphins uh, yeah. throughout the entire game but mainly in the fourth quarter where it was fourth and one they had to delay a game which was stupid I mean you had the helmet communication you gotta be yelling like time out time out time out time out mm-hmm. but that's kind of what bit them in the end because I think there's a good chance that they have that that conversion then there you go it's just a field goal game at that point that first down was BS that should not have happened. oh yeah oh it no was, that it wasn't was, a first it was definitely down. horrible no but um that's, no that's just it's in football, you know, that's football. That's it's football it's football but um, I I actually honestly think that Tua does win this game for them, even though I'm not a big Tua guy. But he does run that offense very well, and they were looking at like top three in the league whenever he was healthy. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's smart for the Dolphins to keep him out because that's three concussions in a year, and you don't want to short a man's life in that behind yeah. you. Yeah, I don't think he should play football again. Um, if if I were in his positions, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. I either. would. Like three concussions, you get one more. You know, see, he's probably already had CTE like 50 or something. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, you're playing with fire there. It's I, I, I wouldn't play again, but yeah, I think um, we saw the most Josh Allen performance I've ever seen in my life. This game, 
encapsulates who Josh Allen is as a quarterback. He'll throw two interceptions, but then come back and throw three yep. touchdowns, two hundred to three hundred and fifty-two yards, and win the game. I was wondering where you were going to take that. And yeah, it's I like, completely bro, agree. Of course, it's yeah. Josh Allen. If you told me Patrick Mahomes did that, I would go, "What? Yeah. Two interceptions? That's crazy." That's why Josh Allen's not getting the MVP this year. He yeah. could have, but too many interceptions. I actually, controversially, I don't believe that Patrick Mahomes should get MVP. Hmm. I don't think he should. Um, Who should get it? If you ask me, I think Jalen Hurts should get it because he's the one that brought the Eagles from being garbage, hot garbage, mm-hmm. to being the front runner to be in the Super Bowl. I think we should save this for the second segment because we could go deep into that. Okay. That is very true. Okay. Speaking of the second segment, that's all the time we have. We will be back in about probably like 15 minutes. Stay tuned. Bye. WVUAFM, Tuscaloosa. And we are back, not 15 minutes later, five minutes later. I don't Ooh. know why I said 15. That would have been a, a long break. Maybe if somebody had to use the restroom or something, but wow, that is not a, us. That's a heck of a trip. See, we got three more games we got to go over. It's like a Lamar Jackson before game winning drive. Trip. Yes, Dude, sir. that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in a playoff game. Only Lamar could do that and still have a job. That was yeah. so goofy. That's kind of like Minka in the national championship against Clemson when um, he's like, yeah, I, I had to go. So I went in the porta potty and then I heard everybody start cheering. So I thought we either lost or we won. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes out and he's like, we won. <laughs> um, what was the next game on the list? Giants-Vikings. Giants-Vikings, yes. I did not expect that at all. I know Adam is very happy. I expected the Vikings to steamroll the Giants. I really did. I didn't expect yeah. it to be close. I just I just didn't think that the Vikings – first of all, I didn't think the Giants' offense could score consistently. Danny Dimes, obviously, dude, he showed out. 301 yards, two touchdowns, 24 of 35. Incredible. Now, Saquon Barkley didn't really do that much, which made me sad because I'm a very big Saquon fan. Daniel Jones had more yards and more carries than Saquon. What does that tell Saquon for the future of him at New York? Probably the obvious. I mean, he's not the guy anymore well, that he was at one point. And part of that's injury. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult spot to be in. But, I, I mean, I think at this point right now, his focus has got to be team wins, right? At least until this season's over. Um, but, yeah, it's got to be like a thought in the back of his mind. Like, if the quarterback's outrunning you, it's really not a good sign. You know, and I don't know. Like, the problem is, like, if it's just yards, like maybe a quarterback gets an 80-yard run, whatever. But – I don't know, attempts, That's that becomes an issue. Because if you're not trusted to get first downs, then I don't know. No, you're right. That's exactly where I was going with it. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I actually have to disagree because Saquon did average 5.9 yards a carry that game. And he well, also – How many carries, though? He had nine. Nine, nine carries. So. That's not like – of the guy type style. Yeah. Right? It's not a bad. He did his job. Yeah, but, uh, wrong, but I mean, but I think the scheming was also tailored to the passing game because the Vikings do have the second to worst pass defense in the NFL. Number one is the Titans. Um, but the pass defense is absolutely horrendous. And I saw a film study breakdown on what they do. They run a crap ton of cover six, which is really easy to break because you have one side of the field's on quarters, one side of the field's on the thirds, and you always aim towards the third side of the field because there's always going to be broken coverages. And they have horrible DBs. I mean, Patrick Pearson has been washed for years now. But I think it was just they're trying to attack the passing game and General Jones at open lane, so screw it, take it. So I mean I think I think Saquon could very well I mean Eagles Demons is pretty good. But I think it'll be much more of a focus on the running game next uh next game. But I think this is really a huge emphasis on the passing game. Kinda like a Madden game. We pass think a bunch. Good run game? What? Because that dynamic of an offense, I think you want to score more. Yeah, I mean, also, you've got, you got to set the pace. Giants are a pretty slow team in the NFL as well, and the Eagles are also going to try to control pace. So I actually have really no implications on what like what they'll go with just because the Eagles are so good. So you got to throw everything at them. But I think they'll go with the run game because Darius Slay is going to lock down Isaiah Hodgins. I don't think that's a question. Darius Slayton, he's not a good wide receiver too. He had 88 yards on four catches. But I don't think he's that good as far as a uh, a wide receiver, too. Saquon Barkley, 
I mean, he had five catches for 56 yards. He didn't do bad. I don't think this is a sign that Saquon needs to leave just because it's not yeah, every yeah. game. But I think that does put something in his head like, you know, this game, I, I want to be more involved. Mm-hmm. It's like the Ravens running back. Uh, I can't remember his name. Dobbins? J.K. Dobbins. Yes. Yeah. He was furious that their quarterback, right. Huntley, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. took the snap in that um, – Quarterback sneak yeah, the, that turned into the a QB fumble. The QB sneak, that was a fumble. First of all, if you have blockers behind you to push you, why do you jump? I don't yeah. get that. If you're, if you're a T-Law and you're a six six, you can do that. But well, that no. was different. Yeah. That was like from the you know quarter yard yeah. line. He was from a full yard out. There's yeah. a lot of bodies to jump over. Yeah. yeah. And Trevor it was, Lawrence did it quick, too. That's the thing. He like yeah. wound mm-hmm. up. Yeah. So, so you said you were surprised that the, the Giants actually won? Yeah, I was very surprised. So I actually, um, I, I was pretty fifty fifty on this just because. Um, so the the Vikings had a negative three point differential at thirteen four. The Vikings had a negative six uh, at nine seven to one. So pretty much they were separated by three points, but the records looked very different. It was just close games and what happened. But I mean, I I could have definitely seen it coming. I mean, the the Giants are just playing with that type of dog that like we saw the Titans like in twenty nineteen. We saw from like. The Eagles, even though the Eagles were really good then in 2017, but it's just that there's kind of something around this team that really just makes them step up, and I think a lot of it has to do with the leadership of Dable. But um, I do, I don't think that they will go into Philly and win, but I do think they could make it interesting. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's something else about this Giants scene. They're super super scrappy, super fun to watch, and for some reason Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slayton are a pretty good wide receiver one and two right now. It's like so they're they're getting it done, and I mean playoff Hodgins is just weirdly good <laughs> and makes, he's very fun no, to watch it makes, too it makes no sense i mean the giants are they're they're doing something right i think they're just a, a year away mm-hmm. so I, I will agree with that 100 percent. they need to get a little bit more they need to draft a wide receiver either put him at one or two because i don't i don't trust darius slayton i wouldn't trust him i would not trust him to catch a cold in the winter i, I really wouldn't mm-hmm. i've seen him drop multiple passes that he should catch but also, the Vikings are insane frauds, and we all kind of expected this. I actually do agree with that because their yeah. um, their record's thirteen and four, yeah. and in close games, they're eleven and zero. Last time I checked, eleven and one now, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. eleven and one, one technically because yeah. of this game. Yeah. But yeah. in the regular season, <laughs> but, yeah. they're eleven and zero in close games by one touchdown. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's that's insane. I don't, you can't win a Super Bowl off that. But right. a fun stat: the Giants last time they won the Super Bowl were number six. In the wild card. This year, they're also number six who won the wild card. Every other year that they've been to the playoffs before that, they lost in the first round. It's like astrology. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Something. Something, Something's up there, mate. Big man upstairs got some plans. Yeah. Not this year. (laughs) I don't don't think so. I I, I can see them coming out winners. I I can see them winning against Philadelphia for one reason. When was the last time Jalen Hurts played? played a football game I don't, I don't have any problems with that uh, he, he played against the Giants week 18 exactly did. it's been a while yeah it's only two weeks it's been a while it's only no, one it's week by yeah but he was hurt though nah that's I, a, I'm that's not worried about that I think when he came came back in week 18 his shoulder was still nagging him Jalen Jalen uh, is I think, I mean, it's I, I think, be I think, I think Jalen Hurts is taking a Six huge step up this year but yeah, I think if, was, if this was rookie Jalen then yeah but like this yeah. is this is third year Jalen I think he's I think he's fine the only argument against that is he, he he didn't have a problem with that at Bama when he was in college he didn't have a problem missing a couple of games and then coming back so I don't know I just think if the Giants make him turn the ball over they can win the game easy. I don't think it's hard for them to stop Miles Sanders because Miles Sanders has been on the decline since uh, about week 16. Um, he lost my he lost my fantasy league for me, which makes me sad. <laughs> it makes yes, me very sir. sad. But he uh, he hasn't been doing good. Hasn't been putting up numbers like Josh Josh Jacobs, my favorite running back right now. That's not on Seattle. Um, hot take: I think he's better than Derrick Henry. But we'll, we'll leave that point, for another debate. I might agree with you. Yikes. Prime oh. Henry, probably not. But nah, put, Prime put, Henry put is Henry, only one put, season. Put Henry behind a real line. Mm, I, don't know, man. I don't know about that. Titans, Titans have a, t- a bottom two line in the NFL. So. Yeah, yeah, true. But And the worst offensive scheme in the NFL. It's run, run, pass. Everybody knows what we're doing. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, hard to stop a, it's not hard to stop the best player if you know exactly what's coming to them. So. And how comes Mahomes so successful? Because he's a quarterback. 
That's fair. That is he, has, he has the ability to chuck the ball. Yeah. Derek, Derek has to stay on the ground. So. Good point. But I think Josh Jacobs is better than Derek Henry. Um, Derek Henry is a one-trick pony. He just runs through people, and that's that's all he does. It's a good trick. Hey, it is a good hey, trick. He's done but enough to get him to the Hall of Fame already. So it's only Probably. good. If, it's only good if you're Marshawn Lynch, because that's that's what he did. But even Marshawn Lynch, Seahawks man, he, fan. bro, he he still went out and caught balls. You know, yeah, he caught a forty-yard dime in the Super Bowl <laughs> to set up Jermaine Curse's catch. So I just don't see Derrick Henry doing that. He's just he's a one-trick pony. But Josh Jacobs, he can do it all. He's so good. You man, did say that, yeah, <laughs> man, he's so good. Anyway, um. What about Baltimore and Cincinnati, the Ravens and the Bengals? I I did not watch this game. I'll be honest with that you. I, I could care less. Poor I execution could not care by less. Cincinnati. You missed a good game. Yeah. Oh, wasn't that the day we had the meeting here? Isn't that mm-hmm. when we missed it? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was just overall poor execution by Cincinnati. The Ravens should not have been in this game by any stretch, but Cincinnati kept allowing them to stay in the game. I mean, a quarterback who just like I don't know. Like I I guess I can see the the appeal of having it as a backup, but. He just made so many plays where you're, like, head-scratching. Like, why would you even think about that? Like, the quarterback sneak, jumping over your guys, like, makes no sense. Um, I mean, at, with the way he did it, it made no sense. Um, I don't know. I was surprised that the Bengals didn't outscore them more. And, I, honestly, I would have thought that – I don't know. It, it's possible this is just – this is your third time playing a team. It's, like, tough to – they they know what you're doing, so it's it's tough to fully execute. But I don't know that I see um, the Bengals beating the Bills now. I had thought for sure, like week 18, I would have told you the Bengals would beat the Bills. I'm not so sure about that now. I think this is a fluke game for the Bengals, and I always say it's better to have your worst game now than later. That's true. And especially with the Ravens team without Lamar, with Lamar they would have won this game by Easily. at least 14 and a half points, yeah. at least. But they didn't, and. Who was number 94 that had that 98-yard touchdown? Oh, it was uh, a D-lineman. Hubbard. Yeah, Dude, Sam Hubbard. He was He's from fantastic. Ohio. Moeller. Dude, that – I did watch it when that happened because my friend told me, hey, turn it on, the game's close. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I turned it on. He runs it back. I went, okay, not anymore. <laughs> Click. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, I don't care. So after that, I didn't watch it, but – that was, that was impressive. Oh, yeah. I loved it. I loved every minute. I love watching big boys get touchdowns, dude. Yeah. I love it. But Joe Burrow, 23 of 32, 209 yards, one touchdown. It Honestly, just looking at the stats, I didn't watch the game, but just looking at the stats, it looked like the Ravens defense showed up, and they knew exactly well, what the Bengals were going to do. Yeah. They're, they're, they're one of the best and most underrated in the league. They have guys I would all agree with that 100%. Very, Roquan very Smith. Good. Dude, when they he's signed him, he's been an amazing him? addition. I mean, oh, that, yeah. I mean, they signed him to an extension before Lamar because they know his importance in the defense. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, I it's it's kind of hard to evaluate this game just because yes, Ravens have Tyler Huntley in, they have Lamar in, they probably win. Um, but you know, you have Lamar and the Bengals also probably play a little bit more aggressive. So, I don't know. I think this is a class classic AFC North matchup. I mean. This this always happens in the playoffs. You get two AFC North teams and they're just going at it. Doesn't matter who's playing. But I mean, I'm not really that worried for the Bengals, um, just because. Um, watch the Bills. I mean, struggle. I mean, they struggled yeah, a lot, a I lot guess that's against true, Miami because uh, they had the same feel where they're playing the same team for a third that, time. Yeah, you're like, come on, they should be better than this. But you know, yeah. it's it when you play the, the same team a third time. That third time you play them becomes a complete chess match. Yeah. And guess who's playing for the third time on Saturday. Who's the that? Eagles and the Giants. Exactly. Yeah, so you you're go. going gonna to get some great play calling. It's just who can slightly get past the other. Because, yes. you know, teams vary from year to year because you have your different schemes. You have to bring different guys in. And you have enough film for that year to say you kind of know what to defend against. So being like an offensive defensive coordinator has to be insanely hard because you're trying to find just the perfect play to run. And, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, it was a really fun game to watch, um, especially when it was tied. Uh and the Ravens were on the one, but we all know what happens. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the Bengals and the Bills match up perfectly. So I think we should expect a high-scoring and really fun game. Well, we should have seen it in the regular season, but sadly with DeMar Hamlin's injury, yeah. that did not happen. Yeah. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of emotions in this game. I don't think you see the kind of emotions where it starts a fight with the teams. Yeah, no. I just think it's – you you see a lot of players playing for their teammate. And I also think the Bengals, you see them not playing for their teammate because they didn't lose a teammate um, 
to an injury. They're playing for the fraternity of the NFL. Exactly. They're they're playing because they know they know it means so much for the Bills. Mm-hmm. So it's just that much sweeter if they beat them. I mean, I think I think the Bengals kind of coming with a little bit of a fire because that game not happening kind of screwed them out of the one seed. So yeah, screwed them out of a chance. I think didn't it, the Bills win make it to the? Oh no, wait, no. It was if they won out and the Chiefs lost. Yeah, no, they they wouldn't be able to get it anyway, though, right? The uh, Chiefs won out. No, if the I forgot the actual if the scenario. Bengals <laughs> won that game, yeah, I'm pretty sure it, they would have the been. Bengals had to win that game and win out, and then the Bills would have been behind them, and then the Chiefs had to lose another one. Yeah, another they, one. they couldn't have gotten the one seed okay. anyway. So interesting. So it ended up working out okay for them because they won the division and they didn't lose the one seed. So yeah, I actually would not like to see a neutral site. Um, AFC Championship game. <laughs> so. I actually, I actually, I actually mess with the idea just because um, I think neutral sites are just cool. And if you can get something that's never happened before, which is an AFC Championship neutral site, I'm like, ah, eh, screw it, it'd be cool to Did watch. Did you hear what, uh, where they might put it? Uh, it's, uh, it should be in Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Yep. I thought about going to that game because that would be so cool. Have fun getting tickets. <laughs> I know. That's, that, that's the thing is I looked up the prices. Mm-mm. Scalpers, Mm-mm. man, they're no joke. Yeah. No, I, I, I thought about going to the Jags Titans Week 18 game just to see, but because two years ago you can go to that game for eight bucks a ticket, but now it's just over 100. So, yeah. <laughs> Very true. Well, the last game we have on the list Cowboys Buccaneers. We'll, uh, we'll make this one quick. Because, I mean, there's really not much to talk about. Tom Brady sucks. All right, goodbye. I'll see you. Mm. I'm just kidding. No, Tom Brady did not do well. Yeah, I mean, his best game. What is the What does the local Tom Brady fan say about this yeah, game? Come on, Elliot. They have statistically the worst rushing game yep. in the league. Their offensive coordinator is rumored to get fired because he can't do his job. Todd Bowles is playing very overly conservative. Tom Brady is expected. He threw 66 pass attempts. That is, un- I mean, that, they're that relying on him to carry him. Bad. That is ridiculous. I like how much they're relying on him. It shouldn't be all on Brady. There has to be some semblance of a run game. You look at their drives; it's all completions. Like it's all like, oh, eight yards here, like two yards there. Like the run games, it almost non-existent. So like when you play like that, it's hard to win. I, I thought the defense really. I mean, they did pretty well. I, I mean. I don't know. It was it wasn't great. Thirty five points theoretically, if you didn't miss the extra points, which is hilarious, by the way. Oh, that that was so funny to me. I mean, I feel bad for him, but it was funny. I don't know. I thought they they gave him as much of a chance as we could have hoped for. Um, I, honestly, I think the Cowboys are probably not as good as people think they are because they don't realize how bad the Bucks were this season. They had a terrible team this season. So. Interesting. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. Next segment, we will be doing game picks. WVUAFM, Tuscaloosa. And we are back with the student section. We're going to do some game picks right now. Yes, sir. Let's see. First game of the day Jaguars, Chiefs. I have, drum roll, please, the Chiefs. Um, I don't think it's really a contest. They're 14 and 3, just like the Eagles. I mean, it's not going to be close. I think Trevor Lawrence, I don't think he throws four interceptions like he did last game, but I think he does throw a couple. I don't think it's going to be close. So Kansas City is right now an eight-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, it's at Arrowhead. Uh, this, this game, it's actually harder to predict than, than I would think just because um, the Jaguars, they kind of have that type of essence that they did in 17 where they could do something crazy. Um it's a scrappy, fun team to watch. The offense has just become absolutely electric. It's so many weapons now, and people forget they have Calvin Ridley next year. So oh, they, very true. So I forgot what? he got traded. Yeah, it was, really did. it was for like a it was, it was actually I think it was for a second. So it was a pretty valuable pick. But um, yeah, no, I'm actually super excited to watch this game. Um, the Chiefs did kind of dookie on them earlier in the season. But I think this is definitely a much different Jaguars team. But I still think the Chiefs win. But I do think uh, the Jaguars cover eight and a half. I think it's I think it's a much really? closer game. Yeah. You think they cover? Yeah, the defense wow. is actually pretty good. So that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's playoffs. You can't. It's hard. Like when it's playoffs, I don't want to look at records. Yeah, um, that's true. I want to look at how the team is right now because it's really just about getting hot. So 
Jaguars. That is very true. It's about who's hot. It's not about the record. Yeah. Like with the Braves, when, when when they won the World Series, they yeah. got hot at the right time. But yeah, so. especially for baseball. Baseball, there's yeah. why so many games is because it's so streaky. Yeah. But yeah, no, I I think the Jaguars do make up for actually a really good game, and I'm probably most excited to watch this besides Bengals Bills. Well, I'm going to jump to the Cowboys 49ers because I think we all kind of have an opinion on that one. That's, I don't think it's going to be close. This could I I actually think this could be the game of the weekend. Really? Yep. Um Interesting. The Cowboys are they're pretty hot right now. I mean, it it was so it's so weird trying to evaluate them coming into the playoffs because they were playing so good and then out of nowhere they just get kind of dookied on by the by the Commanders. And they have no momentum. And then they just go out there and, and play a perfect game against a pretty solid Bucks defense. So Dak Prescott actually just had his best career game ever. Four passing touchdowns, one uh, and then that one on the ground. So he did everything he needed to. They just diced him up left and right. And I don't know. It's just it's if anybody is going to make Brock Purdy falter, I think it's going to be this Cowboys defense. I think their defense is going to show up for sure. Um, I just I have the fourteen the forty ers by fourteen and a half, just because I I think Dak Prescott makes a lot of mistakes. Fourteen and a half. Yes, yes, I do. I think that Whew. the forty ers force Dak Prescott to make a lot of mistakes. Number one, Ezekiel Elliott washed. That's what they got. Tony Pollard though. Ezekiel Elliott is washed. I mean, the do thing not is, think he's good. Is Tony Pollard. The Cowboys know that though, so that's why yes. they use. That, that, that's why they do a, a good one A one B because they they know they use Zeke on that short yardage, and he's been actually amazing for short yardage. Yes, he has. Yeah, for short yardage. But he's. He, but they, they really only use Tony Pollard for kind of gun formations now, which is kind of, kind of it's really shifted to how Cowboys fans have wanted it. They wanted mm-hmm. Tony Pollard to be the primary guy in the backfield, and that's what the Cowboys have finally kind of shifted towards. It just depends on what they got. You know, if there's a lot of short yard situations, they'll use Zeke, but if they want, they have to do a lot of, like, let's say third and six, third and seven, they have Tony Pollard out there for most of the time. I just think that the D-line that the 49ers have will not allow, will not allow for them to have any kind of run game whatsoever. The Cowboys have a top I mean, 3-0 line, though. That is very true, but the 49ers just let a rookie run all over them. I think Kenneth Walker had maybe 100 yards. No, I'm, only, I'm not sure. He only had 60 on the ground. Really? Yep. Interesting. From what I from when I watched it, it felt like he was running all over him. Maybe in the first, first half. half. In the first, first half, half yes. he was successful. In the first half, it, he, they, he ran all over him. Second half, he did absolutely yeah, nothing. Yeah, that's probably what it is. But I, I think this, this 49ers team is angry because they let the Seahawks hang with them. I think they're pissed. And I don't. I, I think the Cowboys just beat a very underwhelming Bucks team. I don't think the Bucks are that good. I really don't. I mean, they scored 31 on the Bucks defense. That's average. I don't. I don't really think that they they're gonna have a problem. Uh, the 49ers, that is. I don't think they're gonna have a problem with the Cowboys. I'm actually going to take the Cowboys here. Um, I think. I don't know. It's just like we can all, we can all say the Bucks are not good, but like there's like they're still they made the playoffs. Had Brady. Offense was horrible. Defense is pretty decent. But um, yeah, I think I think I'm actually going to go with the Cowboys here. I think uh, just them having the perfect offensive game really speaks a lot, and I think we have really the best matchup on this list. So I'm super excited to watch this game. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I, it could definitely go towards the 49ers and to where it could probably get out of hand. It just depends on what coaching you get. So, uh, but I will actually take the Cowboys here and fade the public. Interesting. I I just don't think it'll be close. I I don't think Dak Prescott is that good, in my opinion. Zeke's not good. Dak's not good. C. D. Lamb's the only good guy they have on offense. C. D. Lamb is other amazing. than Tony Pollard. I think Tony's going to leave too. I don't think they re-sign him. He's wanting too much money, most likely. That's kind of hard to predict, but we'll get around to it when it comes. Oh yeah, we'll get around to that later in the semester. Bengals Bills. This is my game of the uh, of the day. This is this is on goes. paper the most fun game that there is most fun matchup it's the closest spread which is at five which is actually no my oh, i think this closest. goes to overtime 100 percent. um yeah i mean i mean if you if there was any of these games that you wanted to bet overtime i think it would definitely be this um this team the, like both these teams are just super high powered offenses and they're pretty healthy for the most part so um i mean you got jamar t for the Bengals. you got Diggs. you got uh davis you got dawson knox so uh, it should be a lot of fun. Um, the Bills also got uh, 
who was it? It was uh, Khalil Shakir, that third round rookie, pretty involved. Yeah. So it should be fun to watch. Um, Bengals, I think they got to get mixing a little bit more in there. I mean, he had like 11 carries for 39 yards last mm-hmm. game, but. Um, I think it should be a lot of high-powered offenses, um, but we could also actually see kind of a low-scoring game. Just depends because both their defenses are pretty respectable as well. So I think you could get one of the best games of all time, but I also think you could get kind of a poop fest. So, do you think this is a bigger rivalry than the Chiefs Bills? Nah, Chiefs Bills they played each other in like what three consecutive playoffs mm-hmm. now. So I think, um, especially with last year's game being the best NFL game ever. Um, I yeah, it it would need definitely a few more years. I mean, it's pretty much gonna be Chiefs, Bengals, Bills, and then the field for the next like mm-hmm. how many years, whatever, just because they all have franchise QBs that are. What in was the prime. that stat? Um, what quarterback is three and zero against uh, Patrick Mahomes? Joe Burrow. Is it Joe Burrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I would have rather seen a Chiefs Bengals game, but we'll probably I mean, get it next week. Well, so. yeah, probably. Um, I would not mind the Bengals winning this, but I do want the Bills to win just because of everything they've been through this season. Yeah. They need that Super Bowl. Um, They've been through a lot of on-the-field stuff and a lot of off-the-field stuff. Everyone knows of the on-the-field, like the DeMar Hamlin situation that happened in week 18 in this – or 16, sorry. Um, This game was actually the one that I picked to be the game of the week just because of the fact that it's the Bengals and the Bills, the the rematch – of that game that we never got. Yeah. And at the time, the Bengals were up 7-3. But then again, they only played five minutes in the first quarter. Yeah. So nobody really knows what's going to happen. It's so unpredictable. This would be the third – what, the third time they played, I think? No, the second time they've played. Yeah, the second time. Yeah, this would be the second time they've played. But this is – it's an unpredictable game, and I could see it going either way, but I have the Bills. Um, So – this game is so hard to predict. I actually, it is. I actually love these spreads. I might actually have to fade the public um, <laughs> on all of these. I love these spreads because these spreads. I'm like Buffalo minus five. I don't think Buffalo wins by five. There's no way. Niners minus three and a half. I kind of like Cowboys money line. Kansas City minus eight and a half. I kind of like Jacks covering. You know, the only one I'm kind of in eh, is Philly, but um, Philly minus seven and a half. But um, with that being said, I'm actually going to take the Bengals here. Um, I'm more scared about the Bills from the performance against the Dolphins and I am the Bengals against the Ravens. Interesting. So, Why is that? Uh, I just think the Ravens are a better all-around team. I mean, their defense is amazing. I think the Dolphins, they have a pretty decent defense as well, but there was no business for them to be in that game. I think there's business for the Ravens being in that game just because it's like AFC North is really like AFC North. I'm just going to say it. AFC North, it's kind of stupid to say, but um, I, the Ravens have an astounding defense um, with just one of the best fronts and secondary combinations that there is. So, I um, mean, it's going to be hard for anybody to throw against them. I mean, most of their games have been like both teams combined under like 30 points. So, uh, I'm more scared for the Bills than I am the Bengals. So, I think the Bengals actually light it up, and I do think they beat the Bills. So, the only thing that I see with the Bengals when they outrank the Bills, I think the offense for the Bengals is better than the Bills. That's a hot topic. I know in my little friend group, my little football friend group, they always roast me saying that. But if you really get down to it, who does Josh Allen have to have to throw to that could be a wide receiver number one on every single team? Stephon. Stephon. And Dawson Knox is a great tight end, but he's not top five. Yeah, I, don't, no. I don't think he's top five. Yeah, no, he's top ten. But he's he's top definitely five. top ten. That's, that's for sure. But look at the Bengals. Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, T. Higgins, and guess what? Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is electric. He's missed time this season, but he's been really good when he's been in. I think the, uh, Jamar Chase has a two-touchdown, 100-plus yard game. I would not be surprised by any means. And I think he does it on less than ten catches. Whew. I mean, that's, I mean that's kind of, you're kind of looking at the game that he had against the Chiefs last year mm-hmm. in the regular season where he went for 260. I so. think he does it on less than 10 catches. I think they use Higgins to get down to the end zone, yeah. and then they go to Jamar in the end zone because he can run some nasty end zone routes. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the the jamar Tredavious white matchup is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Oh, it's so. going to be amazing. It, it makes me wish that the Packers were in the playoffs Yeah. so that we could see A.J. Brown versus – Jair Alexander. Yeah. I love J- Jair Alexander. I love him. 
but I don't like the Packers. <laughs> yeah. I do not like the Packers. Yeah, no. I mean, I think what a lot of people have really forgotten about is that the, the Bills teams had, this Bills team had Von Miller on it. Oh, and yeah. And he went out with an ACL. So I think you have Von Miller on this team. It completely changes the narrative. So uh, I think they kind of got hit with the injury bug a little bit. Miller will be back next year. But um, I think his absence is probably the biggest difference in this game. Oh, one hundred percent. Because the Bengals' O line's good this year. Yeah, they but, have stepped it up. But they are hurt. They're not now. amazing. The, I think they have three guys um, were actually out for last game, and I don't. I think one guy's rolled okay for this next one, but I know they for sure have two guys that are going to be out. In the I O-line. actually did not know that. Yeah. Well, we saw what they could do against the Rams in the Super Bowl. Yeah. They made it there. They just couldn't finish yeah. because of that O line. I mean, Burrow had five drives to tie or take a lead in that game, and you know. So I, th- I think, uh, as much as I love Burrow, I do think he's kind of overrated and people are saying, oh, he's a playoff guy when he hasn't actually played stellar in a single playoff game. Interesting. I don't think he's overrated. I just think he hasn't been given a shot. I, th- I think his overratedness in the playoffs. Okay. Like, as, a, as, a Q- as a quarterback, he's amazing. Top five in the league yeah. easily. But, that, um, that makes more sense. As a playoff quarterback, he's, yeah. he's overrated. But, it's like Lamar. In the regular season, fantastic. Yeah. Playoffs, terrible. Yeah. Looks like garbage. So... Yeah, but I think I think I take the Bills. I mean, not the Bills, the Bengals. I think actually Joe Burrow does get his first like legitimate great playoff win. I'm taking the Bills just because of there's there's so much stuff that's happened to them. Yeah, they, they got they got they got the emotional card on them. They got the oh, yeah. emotional plus three overall. So oh yeah, and I mean if the NFL is scripted, which I'm fifty fifty on that, <laughs> low key a little fifty fifty on it, but. If it's scripted, they're going to win. I mean, hey, I mean, there, there's been some questionable moments. If I had to choose one, it would be the Patriots, Jaguars, 2017 AFC Championship. Oh, you got that right. If I had to choose one, Saints, Rams. The, see, no, it, the no call. See, it's so hard for me to say that was scripted just because both teams were fun to watch. So it's like, because like, I think if, you, if we're going to talk about like, terms of ratings, like how would a Blake Bortles versus Case Keenum or Case Keenum dash Nick Foles Super Bowl look like, like like you know you have, like, like so yeah what happens is that um, well Nick Foles won and then it was the AFC game mm-hmm. so how would it look if it was Blake Bortles and the Jacksonville Jaguars in there versus Tom Brady and the Patriots in there exactly like ratings there's such a massive ratings difference I know everybody loves to hate Tom Brady but everybody loves to watch him so mm-hmm. i think there would have been massive ratings difference so i do think that if you had to look at any one particular moment that could have been wrecked i think you have to look at that oh 100 percent um i i think they didn't want drew Brees to get a super bowl i didn't think they wanted him to beat tom brady in the super bowl because i i think they would have done that should have been if been they would have awesome. gotten it past Saints the Rams. chiefs that year that would have been awesome oh that would have been so sick but this is a hot topic in this little radio room since we've been off air we've been talking about the giants and the eagles game and I think the Giants are going to win. Whew. I think the Giants Whew. win. I think man's, that... Man's feeding for some clicks. Here's the thing. I The reason I think the Giants are going to win is because, number one, Saquon Barkley. He didn't have a good game last week. I get that. But I really do think that Saquon pops off, and he is known as a top five running back in this league, and he proves it in the playoffs right here, right now. I think that Jalen Hurts coming off his shoulder injury and then playing a pretty bad game against the Cowboys last week I don't think that he I don't, I don't think he's ready I think he chokes uh, my thoughts on this game I, I, to put it simple I think the Eagles steamroll to be honest um, I do think there's this definitely could be a, a close game just because like I said play through times chess match but um, I think the Eagles are fired up. I think I don't think Jalen's shoulder is really going to bother him that much. Um, I don't think they're going to also throw that much. I mean, they have, like, the best run game in the entire league. They do, they do. So, I mean, they, they have so many assets they can use. I mean, A.J. Brown is just a literal mismatch. I mean, such a big, huge dude. You know, you got D.K., you know, they're, yeah. they're the same prototype wide receiver. Pretty much. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, who's going to be covering him? Darius Slayton? No. Um, um, Darius Slay. That's who it is. I don't know why I said Darius Slayton. But Darius Slay's on the Eagles. Exactly. Uh, he, yeah, he's on the Giants. He's a wide receiver. 
It's like oh Darius Slay. Darius yeah, Slay yeah, yeah. is on the Eagles, but Darius Slayton is on the Giants. Yeah, it's so, like it's like you <laughs> that's got, where I got that like, messed up. You got a, you got a Dory Jackson out there going to try to cover AJ Brown, and yeah, then no also Devonta Smith has been amazing the past five games of the regular season. He's been like the wide receiver two in fantasy the past five games. Yeah. So he's found. Uh, I mean, he has his role in this offense aside from the horrible week one zero point production. He's actually been a really good wide receiver this this year. He's actually been like a top ten wide receiver in fantasy, which a lot of people actually don't know. But um, I think the Eagles too many weapons. I think they're just going to overpower the Giants. The Giants, the dog in them will finally run out. And but I do think this is an amazing year for the Giants and Brian Dable. But well, I don't get me wrong. Out. I want the Eagles to win, but I think it'd be sick to see the Giants again go from the number six spot in the wild card to go on and win the Super Bowl. That would be sick. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl? No. Am I reaching with this pick? Yes. They need. They need. To, they need to learn to be good and win the Super Bowl, <laughs> not be bad and win the Super you Bowl. You got that right. I mean, Dan, I think it's going to be a really close game. If I'm being realistic, it's going to be a close game. Um, I'm still going to stick with my pick, the Giants. But I, I think it's – I think the Giants win by a field goal. 34-13 Eagles. Interesting. That, that, that's been my pick of the past couple of days. So, Well, we shall see. That is all the time we have, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. WVUA-FM, Tuscaloosa.